Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. I'm super excited because this artificial brain with 10 artificial neurons is going to control this robot in a way that is fully autonomous. As this robot car drives around, you can actually see the neural activity within the brain. This is because every time a neuron fires, an LED will turn on. Also, the artificial synapses are made with optocouplers where LEDs are used to send and receive signals. The artificial brain is made up of 10 neurons and 30 synapses and is built as a hardware-based neural network. This is an open source project and I'm going to explain exactly how to build it. I will provide the full component level circuit diagram, neural network architecture diagram, and table summarizing how to adjust the weights. Just send me an email if you would like the circuit diagram. If you want to try and build and even improve this design yourself, that would be great and I will provide a full parts list in the video description. I also plan to make and sell a kit that has most of the components needed for the build. If you think this project is sweet, check out our Ko-Fi page and consider supporting the Global Science Network. Also, sharing this content is super helpful. In one of my recent videos, I controlled an RC truck with a similar artificial brain, but the remote control output was not analog. Two extra neurons were added and the layout of the neural network was modified to now allow analog output control. I used a L298N motor driver module to access the motors directly. So this design can be easily used on most small vehicles that use a skid steer control. Since the output is analog, the vehicle has much smoother control. I could easily wire the motors of the RC truck into the motor controller and it would almost be a plug and play design change. This hardware-based neural network is drastically different than neural networks that are simulated on digital computers. This is because the way the information flows around the hardware-based neural network utilizes trillions and trillions of states, and the design allows for a much higher potential level of consciousness. I made a video about how consciousness works and explained that this design has less consciousness than a worm, like a C. elegant, that has around 302 neurons, but in my opinion, this small artificial brain has more consciousness than a computer and even more consciousness than a multimodal AI system like ChatGPT. I did a bunch of tests over two days with the robot and was very happy with the performance. Here is some of that footage. I had multiple tests that were over five minutes where the robot only occasionally bumped into an object and never ran into a wall. I like this split screen where you can see the neural activity as the robot drives around and interacts with the environment. Researchers can actually get biological neural recordings that flash using two-photon microscopy, but the spatial resolution is not very dense, meaning you can only see a small subset of neurons. The temporal domain is also limited as the recording frame rate is typically less than the max firing rate. In the artificial brain, the LEDs may seem to be on rather than flashing as the firing rate is around 1000 Hertz. And as a human, we can only see flashes up to around 50 Hertz. So an oscilloscope is needed to check the exact firing rates, but we can see when the neuron or synapse is active as the LED turns on. Here is the architecture diagram we used for the RC truck, and here is the new neural network architecture diagram for the robot vehicle. We have the input layer, which are inputs from the IR proximity sensors. These are front, back, right, and left. The first hidden layer basically modulates based on the input. The motion direction layer, firing rate, determines whether the motors on the right side of the vehicle should be going in forward or reverse. Also, whether the left side motors should be going in forward or reverse. The variable speed layer then determines how fast the right and left motor should be turning. The outputs from these six neurons get sent out of the artificial brain using the ESP32 microcontroller and received by a second ESP32 on the robot. These are then fed into the motor controller and are the exact commands that the L298N motor controller needs to apply power to the motors to control the vehicle. Here is a table that explains how to set the weights in the network. These are adjusted by changing the resistance values by turning the potentiometers within the circuit. The basic idea is that when front is activated, it turns right by having low resistance for left forward to keep the left forward side on, and an inhibitory response for right forward so power is not applied to right forward. Having right reverse on makes it turn much faster, and I did find that it helped to activate this when it was really close to an object. If the back sensor is activated, we mostly want to inhibit the vehicle from going in reverse. When right is activated, we want the right forward side on and the left side off. When left is on, we want left forward on and right forward off. Having the opposite sides reverse can be helpful. 
the firing rate of the motor direction layer is basically passed into the variable speed layer. There are also inhibitory connections within the motor direction layer to ensure only one direction command is sent. Now I will show what this logic looks like in the actual network. Now let's test the control. Right now there's no object in front of it, so it's going right forward and left forward. If we place an object in front, we want it to turn to the right. It does this by going right reverse and left forward. So that's exactly what we want. If we place an object on the left as well, we also want the truck to turn to the right. It does this by going right reverse and left forward. If we remove the front one, now we just have an object on the left hand side. We want to turn to the right and this happens by going left forward, which is perfect. Now we can move this to the right hand side. If we have an object on the right, we want to turn to the left and this is done by going right forward, which we can see we have here. The last test is if we have an object in front of all three sensors, we want it to go left reverse and right reverse, which is exactly what we have. So right now this robot is working perfectly. Now that we have full analog control, the next step is to have the network adjust the weights on its own. Basically, it would start out just bumping into things, and when that happens, the states that were active just before or during the collision would be adjusted. It could also make adjustments by being close to an object and not actually require a collision. Over time, the network would achieve improved control and hopefully even achieve better control than manually adjusting the weights. Once we have neurons in the network that can do this, scaling up the design for other tasks would be fascinating. If you want to build the network, here is the circuit diagram and most of the parts are displayed at the component level and the values of the resistors are shown. The resistance of the potentiometers need to be adjusted and just show the max resistance value. Starting with this design as a baseline, you could then try ways to make the design neuromorphic, which I will be trying as well. To watch the next video in the series, click here.